The search for truth never ends. Introducing June's Journey, a hidden object mobile game with a captivating story. Connect with friends, explore the roaring 20s, and enjoy thrilling activities and challenges while supporting environmental causes. After seven years, the adventure continues with our immersive travels feature. Explore distant cultures and engage in exciting experiences. There's always something new to discover. Are you ready? Download June's Journey now on Android or iOS. Being a marketer is no sweat. You just have to manage dozens of channels, launch hundreds of campaigns, score thousands of leads, and... Okay, fine. It's a lot of sweat. Unless you have HubSpot's AI-powered marketing tools to help you do all that and more. Get started at HubSpot.com slash marketers. Subscribe on iTunes at Toddcast Podcast. Hi, Todd. How's it going? Hey, Mandy. Good. How are you? Hi. I'm good. I'm good. This is great. Can you hear what my boyfriend's on rescue training right now? He's with the North Shore Rescue. Can you hear it in the background? Totally fine. Really? Totally fine. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, good. Because I'm like, I'll go in the bathroom. Yeah, no, I can <laughs> I can hear you fine. Yeah. Thank you for oh, taking God. some time to, to join us. Absolutely. This is so, uh, like, I just don't know even where to begin. I think it's like 13 years ago that we probably would have had, like, our first encounter uh, in the, I... what was it? It was the um, tour to trailer. Yes, that's what it was. Oh my gosh. And to think like 13 that was years ago. One of the coolest radio promotions that I did where we'd literally pack up the radio station and just take it to like high traffic areas in the city of Vancouver. Like, you know, Todd, what it's a crazy funny idea. To even hear you say that. Like, I'm thinking to myself, like, we would sit outside of the Massey Tunnel. Do you remember that for a week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, now I feel like if we ever tried to do that, there would be so many people. <laughs> Be upset. Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. It's been over a decade. I mean, I guess I mean, my kids yeah. are, are 10 and eight now. Like just, and I didn't know you when you were a dad. Wink of an eye. Yeah. It's uh, wow. incredible. Wow. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for reaching out. I know we yeah, kind of lightly touched base a while back. I mean, and then- Yeah. I mean, I think it was probably right at the start of the pandemic. And then I just, I mean, I don't know about you, but my world has just been a clusterfuck in the last 12 to 15 months. Like I almost stopped doing the podcast. Um, thankfully, BCIT, you know, was able to pick me up and I, I still had a full-time job. You know, there, a lot of people had it way worse than me, but I was so close to stopping because I mean, the amount of energy and time it takes to put these things together uh, and then to lose all this sponsorship money. And it's like, well, like if I'm going to take all this time and energy and I don't get those, maybe sometimes I, I don't get to go to my kid's soccer game. Cause I need to do an interview or like, where's, where does that like, where's the monetary stop for that? There has to be some sort of compensation, right? Like I, I'm not only doing it for money, but if I'm not making money, you got to question it. Like, yeah. Like, you know, I, I have a long, long storied, career in radio is so it's not like i'm looking and yearning for that like that thing that spark because i've had it i've been there i've done it this is just yeah. just around and have fun and talk to friends like you and you know you know todd i had no idea that you nearly and sorry i'm like diverting the conversation but i had no idea you nearly canceled it really close like really close wow and so what was the turning point Well, it was just that it still brought in enough money that it still made sense to keep slogging. Good for you. Yeah. It's just that like, you know, even though it's only, say it's a couple grand a month. Well, that pays for like all of our vacations for the year. Like, you know, it makes it so that I can get my kids goalie equipment and not feel like I'm going to have to like go to the bank and like get as well. Yeah. And to even just like have our conversation start from like tour to trailer broadcasting live on the side of, you know, I, I remember we were at the P and E and we were at, um, oh, uh, obviously the Massey tunnel and it's just yeah. like, and then to hear this full circle. And I agree with you. I mean, it is just right now, pandemic wise, you're just like rolling with the punches. And I oh. think anybody, and I still have so many wonderful close friends that are still a part of the industry, but anybody who's in there, I can honestly say is like a handful of friends. And it's like, just hold on because it's few and far between. 
Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't even make an effort to get back into radio because once I got let go, so many of my friends were like, dude, you like start a podcast. I'm like, well, you make it sound I'm like I have a wife and kids. I can't just like start a podcast. I'm like, yeah, well get them to pay you. Well, it can't be that easy. No, no. Like, dude, like, <laughs> like just, just talk to the people that you've hosted a bunch of things for, or, you know, maybe, you know, a, a GM at a, at a bar or like a beer company or coffee companies or like, just talk to them and see maybe they would. And then lo and behold, sure enough, they, they did. Oh, well, and you know, you put that out there and that's, that's a great thing. And um, I mean, you've got such a history with everybody, obviously here in Vancouver, that now it allows you to even get out further. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm in multiple, you know, podcast networks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's taken off and how, for, for you, how is, you know, how is your circle with COVID and like, how did your world change you know, to meet oh. this pandemic head on, like we have, to, we're forced to. You know, it's interesting you ask that, Todd. Um, there was a moment last night that really hit me. And I think I, I, uh, business has picked up in, in full transparency. Business has really started to pick up. I would say ever since January, I saw a huge shift. Now, um, you and I talk about our experiences together 13 years ago, over a decade ago. And um, so my whole background came from the broadcasting side and going from the Fox over to the beat, which is now Virgin Radio, morning and afternoon show co-hosting. And then 2012, I actually decided to start my own business and started contracting myself out. Uh, CTV at the time, I was sponsored by Reebok. They really helped me in that. Um, and basically I started to, you know, um, contract myself out to all these different stations and then being TV stations as a majority and different magazine outlets and whatnot. And uh, working heavily through that. And then two years ago, I started to see a niche for bringing in healthy habit practices within corporate workplaces, which you and I can probably have a good chuckle about from time to time from our, our good old history. And um, I probably did not fall into that category very well at the time <laughs> that we're talking of. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, we live and we learn and we know and we become more in tune with ourselves. And so I'm actually sitting here on this podcast with you after I just got down from the grind. I, it opened yesterday the gross wow. grind and I'm like oh I gotta tackle that you know that's the, it's the second day of the year it's open and it's a huge passion of mine so now when we talk about when the pandemic hit I'd actually started to get into the corporate workspace of working with a ton of different companies. So I had just started keynote speaking and I had my first gig was lined up for March and I was actually in Arizona when the pandemic hit. And all I remember was it was this ripple effect, Todd, and it was like, canceled, 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 canceled. And everybody was in fear, right? Which is obvious. Mm -hmm. Now, what was interesting about that is that, so now I'm represented since last August by the National Speakers Bureau. And they helped me to, you know, get out to different companies and um, create an even solid, more solid foundation. But at that time, I was creating my own contracts. So therefore, I never in one of my contracts stated the deposit is for, you know, how do I put it this way? Anything other than the fact that you will, uh, you know, not get it back if we don't reschedule or anything like that. I had none of that stated. It was all things that I created on my own. So not only was I reimbursing the second payments, I was reimbursing the first payments. And I think last year was fueled with a lot of fear. And oh, when I yeah. say that, right, and it was just like, I, I look at others, and I actually don't look at others first, I look at myself, like, I didn't necessarily, I didn't find my feet until this past January. And I tackled a lot of opportunities last year. And I wouldn't say until this January. So I guess what is that now 11 months, 12 no, 11, 10 months after everything hit yep. that now things are flying. And wow. so where I come back full circle to say, I was thinking about it last night was that I was thinking to myself, my gosh, did I ever operate on a lot of fear last year? And I, I genuinely think it was because it was what I was feeling from others. It was that sense of urgency of them being like, 
we need the deposit back. We can't confirm anything further. Everything was just halted. So, yeah. And so, so how did you get into keynote speaking? Like, how did that happen? So I had actually, um, it was about, it was about three years ago. I started to notice. So with regards to starting up my own business, I also developed an app. We work with clients all over the world and we work with them fitness and nutrition wise. And when I say we, it's a team uh, that works within it. Now, what I had started to notice is that I was being asked to speak at different expos and um, a lot of the more Toronto side of things. Um, and then what ended up happening is I started to notice there was a corporate demand. And I was like, I am not ready to speak in corporations. <laughs> I've got no idea where the heck this is coming from. But I started to notice that a lot of the same demand of what corporations wanted me to talk about was the same. And so I stepped back. I went to a mentor of mine that I've had in the speaking realm and I said, Hey, you know what? Like, do you think this is something that I should tackle? Like, is this something that you see in the world of keynote speaking as in demand. And he said, a hundred percent, I do. Mm -hmm. There's no question that you would excel at this from your background and your experience. So I actually did the Harvard leadership program I got into last year. So I spent a lot of my time last year investing in education. So once my bubble was burst with the whole first, what was it? 10 months of my keynote speaking career, really starting off with like purpose and now a new alignment and a new path um, and getting signed by the National Speakers Bureau was huge. I worked on that relationship for months and months. It felt like a job, right? Like you're all of a sudden applying again, but you're like, I run my own business, but I'm applying. And um, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was quite entertaining. But yeah, so anyways, it just a constant investment in my own personal development and my own contributions towards different corporations. And, you know, um, we're now in the virtual world. So of work. So a lot of my keynote speaking topics have catered around uh, healthy habits within the virtual workspace. And how can we ensure that if you're staring at your screen for 10 plus hours a day now, where is time for family? Where is time for the non-negotiables that you have personally within your life? Are you still following your professional non-negotiables? Like, is there so many distractions within your day, which are said to happen every, you know, couple minutes at this rate? Mm -hmm. it, what is, what is your productivity level? How are you, how engaged are you with the company that you're working with? So yeah, this is where it's grown to. And now, thankfully, as of the last five months, so January to now, it's it started to take off. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm, I was just checking out your website before jumping on and uh, you're mentioning the, you know, boosting product uh, productivity within the company, but like engagements and happiness. And of course, you've got the, the Hooked on Habits podcast, like you must not like free time. My gosh, <laughs> <laughs> you'd think that, no, my free time is getting out into the forest with having no cell phone on me yeah. and no signal. That's and the way to go, right? I can't wait. Right. Uh, somebody, I remember it was uh, somebody in, uh, it was a DJ in Calgary who'd said something out about, you know, what do you think about social media and this and that, whatever. And I wrote back saying, I can't wait to leave social media in the dust. Like if there's one thing that I don't like about podcasting and just kind of keeping up with everybody is that constant demand for content. It's so it's, it's just not soul crushing, but it's so like, Oh, if you don't want to do it, it's really hard to be creative just cause. Well, and I think that there's a really interesting um, and I appreciate you bringing that up because I think that there's such a double there's such a double, like there, there's two ways to look at it. We get to connect with our community, which is fantastic. Everyone that's listening, that's like what drives you to do this, to come onto this, you know, podcast and talk to people, which is fantastic. But the hardest part is that it's so demanding in the way of like new content. Um, people generally have to see something from what I hear three to five times until they actually see it and consider seeing it for the first time. Right. So for you, it's like, oh my gosh, I've put this out four times now like this is old material and to the general public that's scrolling it's like oh gosh this is what Todd's up to today and you're like no I put that up two months ago and that's so true that is so right? true right because it, it's just like over and over you're like see you're like yeah yeah no it's cool they got the guy from clutch on great or you know whatever it is yeah. but you know, they may like the tweet but they don't 
check it out. You know, it's like, oh, just, just check it out. It's fun. It's good. It's like, so it's tricky. Yeah. It's tricky for sure. It is. And I think that there's another piece to it too, where, uh, and I'm starting to learn a lot more about this thanks to having more hands in the business because I can't do it all on my own. Um, So I'm hearing exactly what you're saying, because I'll be very honest, I need support in it as well. And I've had support, I think since 2016, when it comes to marketing and social media. And yeah, and it's just something I just, you know, uh, I got very overwhelmed by. And what I would also point out is the algorithms. Like I, there's a lot of pieces of that where it's like, you can put out your best, most prized possession, your best podcast interview. And you're like, did anyone see this? I, I know, don't, right? I don't think or, anyone saw it. Or you just throw it like a random picture of a deer drinking a beer and it gets like 500 likes and 16 million shares. Like, yeah, that's not what yeah. I wanted you to engage in. Come on. Yeah. Let's talk content. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. I would love to get outside of, you know, the public speaking and health and podcasting and stuff. And I want to, I want to get into what you were like as a kid. Oh, what's, what are you, what are you playing around the house? Like for, for music and stuff, what are, what's in the Gill house? What What are your parents playing you? What's the music? A lot of Phil Collins. Nice. A lot of Phil Collins, uh, a lot of Jimi Hendrix. Mm. Um, I probably weaseled in a lot of Celine Dion as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got a, lift for a lot of different sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, I even said, I remember as a kid growing up, like this was when you got your like kindergarten books filled out and it said, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I always wrote Celine Dion, Celine Dion. And my parents were like, what is happening here? What? Yeah. But here we are now, and I can't sing even in the shower, so there was no hope. Yeah. Um, but, but music uh, was always pretty prevalent in your house, eh? Oh, huge, huge. My mom, actually, it's so funny that I got into radio and even podcasting still, and we're talking right now. She actually had a huge um, love for DJs growing up. And when I say that, she'd call into the radio station all the time and, (laughs) you know, request songs and everything like that. So of course, when she saw that her daughter was doing this, she's like, this is so cool. So Yeah. yeah, music was huge. What was your first concert you went to? That would have been, okay, my first CD was Janet Jackson. That's like the first thing that comes to mind. Um, I think my first concert that I went to was Alanis Morissette, Mm. I want to say. Yeah, it was either, oh dear, it was either her or Shania Twain. I don't know which one was first. Mm. What are you you binge watching right now, lately? Um... You're not going to be impressed. I really don't watch TV. (laughs) Really? Good for you. So what do you do? Like, Like, what do you, if you flip, you flip around on like YouTube videos and Facebook videos. Like, what do you do? By the time. So I will work during the day. My boyfriend and I will go out for a run um, or I'll go meet the girls and we'll go do some sort of like grind or trail run or whatever it is. And no word of a lie, 830 hits. Okay. And uh, I'm looking at my clock right now. I'm like, oh, I'm doing good. I'm still awake. I'm starting to feel pretty tired here. (laughs) And uh, we're in bed. We're in bed. So 5.30 rolls around real quick. And I swear that morning show life. 5.30 in the morning? Yeah. What? And up until the point, actually, so my Bernese mountain dog, he really is to thank for getting me into the love of getting into trail racing and, and uh, being involved in that community. But he actually would have me up at 4.30 in the morning. And so morning show radio always started at 3.30. And so 4.30 felt good to me. Right. And uh, right. so 5.30 sometimes is really just sleeping in, to just be honest. In. Yeah. Well, you're mm-hmm. obviously healthy. You're fit. What, 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 what are your sports? What do you like to, what do you like to watch? What do you like to play? Ooh. So, um, right now I am huge into, uh, trail running. So that is, that's my go-to. I've got a big, uh, the, the races are canceled for a majority of them. Yeah. Um, we've got our fingers crossed for a couple, but there's one coming up in June. I call the knee knacker. Okay. Um, it goes from Horseshoe Bay to Deep Cove for anybody that's familiar with the North Shore oh, wow. Trails. Wow. Yeah. It's and it's a beautiful one. And it's 50 kilometers, just shy of 50. And uh, it is supposed to be running in July, but we're going to actually do it in June. And then in July, I've got an 85 kilometer planned in Whistler. 
and then another 50 in September. And that one, I think, is about 12,000 feet elevation. So they're... Yeah. So when you ask what I'm binge watching, <laughs> you're like, yeah. this explains it. I'm not binge watching anything. <laughs> oh my god! I'm uh, snoring before the television goes on. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, I'm going to respect your time here. I'll, I'll wrap it up with a with a tough question for you. Okay. I've been kind of lobbing you softballs here. What's your career highlight? Can you can you nail it down to one thing? You know, something that really stands out to me, and it's the first thing that comes to mind, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, Rihanna went on tour, and I remember solo, I got to go on stage at Rogers Arena and welcome her on stage. And yeah, that was like, I remember the request coming in very last minute, and I just went into my closet, and I picked out this dress that my best friend still makes fun of me of. He's like, what the heck were you wearing? And I'm like, (laughs) I don't know. I was so nervous. And (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but it went well and uh yeah so i would definitely stay say introducing rihanna at rogers arena it's the first thing that comes to mind i know there's a lot of career highlights but yeah. um i'm gonna go with the first one knees are shaking as you're doing it and such oh. a scary thing to be in that environment and you have <laughs> to do it it's like a sink or swim you're doing it. It is. And it's a terrible thing to wear heels as a woman when your knees are shaking. I don't <laughs> recommend it because you're literally on stage and you're already A in a dress. You're B, your legs are shaking. C, you're like, I don't think my feet are on the ground still. And yeah, then you just do it. And it was, it was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. What's, what's the plan for you for the rest of the year? How far do you have things mapped out? Um, truthfully, it's interesting. COVID's been a huge reality shaker in the way of having control over next to nothing. Um, it's exciting. I tell you all of these events that are upcoming and genuinely speaking, they've all been self-created for the most part, because, you know, you use certain benchmarks and you say to yourself, I'm going to hit this, or I'm going to hit that. And, um, I'm using that in like a athletic standpoint at the moment, but I'm also going to say it in a, in a, in a business way too. I said at the beginning, of the year, I wanted to do a keynote every single month for this year. And um, February was my only one so far, but I made up two the next month. And it just allows me, I mean, the last one I was on was 7,000 people. And the next one coming up is 650. And I'm broadcasting right from my home studio office, like you're sitting in right now. And I'm hardline to every, you know, outlet in the house and uh it is it's wonderful to be back with people i know i'm not able to hug them or give them a high five anything like that quite yet close enough it's it's so close and it is you can feel it you can see the interaction in the chats you can see the high fives on the screen uh you can feel people by their polls that they're putting into the keynote speaking topics and that to me is is really really satisfying so i'm very grateful yeah that's great congrats on all the success thank um, you. and thank, thank you. you for for joining us you're simple to find on twitter you're at mandy gill you're at mandygill.com on Instagram yeah. and mandygill.com is the website or is it .ca? Yeah. <laughs> you, you're now under, yeah. You're now understanding why Instagram is mandygill.com. Uh, it makes it so easy. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting it. Mandy, have a great night. It's good to see you. And uh, you too. we'll see you online. Thanks Todd. All the best with the podcast. The Todd cast podcast on toddhancock.ca. Listening to a podcast should be time well spent, and I promise it will be if you'll give this podcast a try. It's called Something You Should Know. I'm the host, Mike Carruthers, and in every episode, I talk with leading experts on topics I know you will find fascinating. From why people can't keep secrets, what your favorite music says about you, why your pet acts in strange ways, and so much more. Something You Should Know is designed to give you information you can use in your life and give you great intel that you can share with others. I'm told it's a binge-worthy podcast. And with over a thousand episodes, there's a lot to binge on. Something You Should Know has been ranked in the top of the Apple podcast charts consistently for a long time. I know you're going to like this. I just need to get you to try it. Something You Should Know. 
It's available wherever you listen to podcasts. Contained herein are the heresies of Radolf Buntwine, erstwhile monk turned traveling medical investigator. Join me as I study the secrets of the divine plagues and uncover the blasphemous truth that ours is not a loving God and we are not its favored children. The Heresies of Radolf Bantwine, wherever podcasts are available. What's up, everyone? It's Noah Daniels. Hey, y'all. I'm JJ. Hey, guys. It's Kat. And we're your hosts of the Real Hauntings Podcast. We bring on guests who share their firsthand encounter ghost stories and supernatural experiences. Now on to the trailer. I've been warned to not tell this story, but... I think because of the way it ends, it's okay to tell this story. Because some people say that with certain entities, to like speak of them or talk about them or in any way like portray them as powerful will attract them to other people. The creepiest thing about it to me is a lot of times it would wait for me to notice it. Like it would just lay its arm out like this and then I'd be like, where is it? Where is it? And then I'd see it and then it would just slither back. For more information on the Real Hauntings, Real Ghost Stories podcast, make sure you check out real.fm to learn more about our podcast and many other amazing podcasts.